How's it going, everybody? How, uh, wh who's the youngest in here? How, how young are we? It's, uh, holy shit, it's so cold. Oh my God, it hasn't even started yet. I went outside and I, my, my testicles went behind my breasts. It was insane. <laughs> I told that to somebody and they were just like, oh, you don't know, there, there's, it gets so cold that, you know, one of them will go behind your knee and then the other one will go underneath your armpit. Now that's cold, eh? I'm like, oh my God. It's so nice that you all came out this evening. I'm very cool. I'm very, very happy that you're here. It's very cool. Um, it's my second time in, in Minneapolis, but the first time was so long ago it doesn't really count. So, but it's really been, it's really been fun and cold. So I'm just, I'm just hoping everything's cool. I, don't worry, I won't keep that joke up all night. Don't worry about it. I'll try not to, but other than that, it's great to be here. Thank you so much for coming out. See, my first line was originally explaining what happens to your testicles in Minnesota cold. No, You're already good. no I already got it. Right. I already covered that very right. much so, and everybody's like, okay, next. <laughs> Let's go. That's it. Awesome. So we do have a microphone there. That's where... Oh, there it is, is right yeah. there in the middle. In the middle, so they can look at you. You can look at them. Hello. Um, and already do we have a, somebody coming up to ask a question. Feel free to go behind and make a line if you want to if you want to have a, a have at it with the Q&A. But uh, yeah, absolutely. But just don't knock each other over or anything like that. Don't bum rush, <laughs> which is cool because it doesn't look like anybody cares. <laughs> People are like, nobody's bum rushing, John. This is Minnesota bum rushing. Yeah, this, this, is. Is this is polite, is polite Minnesota bum, rush. bum rushing. They're like, excuse me. I'm this is as intense as it gets. Heard me. Yeah. I haven't heard a single oh, sorry. Oh, so. wow. Oh, they, there this it is. This is intense. Nice. Awesome. Um, but yeah, I guess I guess we'll start. The, I guess we'll start. I mean, I was just was, explaining what it was. Oh, okay. Was well, then, well, you, you go ahead. You do. No, you, no, no. Like, I I figure a good moderator talks only little. Okay. Did you have anything else you wanted to say? Not, 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 have you guys been watching Disenchantment? Yeah. Woo! That's really cool. Thank you very much. That makes me very happy. I just need to double check that because we're really excited about that show and stuff. And do you guys heard about the new Adventure Times? Right. Which is really cool. It's amazing how things come back to life. It's really awesome. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. So I guess we'll start. Uh, yes. What, uh, just say your name and, you, and your question. Hi, John. My name is Katie. Hi, Katie. How you Hi. doing? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm all right. Well, we're, we're, even though you're cold. Yes. Glad no, you're here. I'll make it. I'll make it. <laughs> um, so actually, it's about disenchantment. Oh, okay. I'm hoping you can uh, settle a, a little dispute between my husband and myself. Uh oh. Am I getting in the middle of some business here? With, oh, it'll uh, be all right. Uh -oh. As long as you answer the right way. Oh, oh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> Watch well, out. You, you know, you pick my mind. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so the debate is, what is King Zahn's accent? Uh, it, what are my options? Well, um, <laughs> one of us said New York and the other one says Boston. Uh, it is New York. Yes. Thank you. You answered correctly. Thank you. It is fun. New York. It's actually the interesting thing about King Zog. I was saying this to somebody the other day. King Zog is based on... When, all right, when I booked Disenchantment, I auditioned for it with a very kingly sort of voice, <laughs> right? I was doing something sort of like this, you know. <laughs> I'm King Zog, you know. And I got the job, and I was like, cool, man, awesome. And there, right before the, we do a table read, you know, where we read the scripts out loud in front of all the animators, in front of all the, all the writers and everybody, and, and just to get a feel of, of, of how it's going. And so we had a table read for the first episode at Rough Draft Studios. And... They said, uh, my agent said, listen, Matt and um, um, uh, Josh Weinstein, the co-executive producer of the show with Matt, a uh, great writer, Simpsons, Futurama, he's the co-executive producer of the show, they want to have a word with you before the table read. Now, during Futurama, <clears throat> in between takes, uh, we would fool around and, and, and talk about this thing called the tube bar tapes. Now, the tube bar tapes are or basically what happened was in the late 70s in Jersey City, don't worry, this, this will pay off. <laughs> in the late 70s in Jersey City, there was a bar called the Tube Bar, and they had a rock and roll band that played there, and they didn't get paid. So in retribution, they prank called this bar for a year, and the guy behind the bar is red. Now, the exchanges they had went on something like this. Um, oh. Yeah, can I talk to a guy named Al, please? You want to talk to a guy named Al? Yeah, uh, Al Koholik? 
You want to speak to a guy named Alcoholic? Yeah, Alcoholic. <sighs> alcoholic! <laughs> alcoholic here! <laughs> alcoholic! <laughs> Nobody here by that kind of a name. Okay, thank you. And so that's basically where the, uh, where the, um, the, the Mo and Bart exchanges used to come from. But it gets even dirtier. Who's calling me on this? Oh, it's, it's a... Hold on. <laughs> Hello? It's, it's Spectrum. <laughs> Fuck you, ruined my story. <laughs> I was wondering if they were looking for Cable Al. company, assholes. <laughs> Anyway, so we would do the two bar tapes. We would sit there and just, you know, and, 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 and you know, there's you know, uh, Salami. There's ridiculous ones. Um, Mike Hunt is another name if you say it. Oh. You know, you, you'll, you'll, you'll get it. Yep. Um, uh, but, but we would do that in between takes, and me and Billy West and Matt Groening would be dying. And so they pull me aside and... And, and Matt Granny just looks at me, and, and I'm like, hey, fellas, what's up? And Matt just goes, just do red. And so that voice, King Zog, is basically... Red the bartender. It's, it's, it's red, <laughs> red the bartender, the owner of the bar. He's like an ex-boxer. He's just, uh, hello. Well, I know who you are. You're prank calling my bar. Come on down to the bar. I know I got cut you on your face. I put the two ZZs on your cheeks for your life. And, and like, he's... <laughs> He sounds like he's about to have an aneurysm any second. <laughs> and so it just, it just made total sense to play that, that role like that. But he is technically, I mean, more specifically, you're both wrong because uh, he is Jersey. Oh, Jersey. We didn't even think about but, Jersey. But that's all right. Oh, no. You, you got the closest. <laughs> all right, yeah. Jersey City is like across the river, so don't worry about it. Oh, there you go. Spoke. It's okay. Huh. So you can oh, see Jersey it's, City it's, from, New, from New York City, so that's it's all true. good. It's true. You're well, good it's a good go. choice. Oh, I'm thank glad you. you went with Red the Bartender, Th not thank you. King Leanne. Yeah, that, yeah, that would have been. Your, your comedic timing and disenchantment is my, fa that's my favorite part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> really. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank Great you. question. Great question. Yes. All right. Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, what's your name? Trevor. Trevor, all My right. My wife, Robin. Hi, Robin, how you doing? Uh, we just came here straight from the doctor, and we are wondering if uh, Bender could tell us the sex of our future meat bag. Oh, shit, really? Oh, my God, seriously? No shit. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. She all right, I'm really honored. This is really cool. This is gonna be uh, this is gonna be the big paint decider. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> well, well. Looks like you're gonna have a bouncing baby boy. What's, what's funny is, is there's a tiny little arrow pointing at what looks to be like a huge penis on this kid. <laughs> so you're gonna have a well-hung child. Congratulations. No, absolutely. Let's give it up for them, huh? They're gonna have a kid hung like a horse. That's fantastic. Wow. Oh, that's really cool. Congratulations, you guys. That's really great. Oh, awesome. All right. How you doing? I'm good. I have no clue how the hell to follow that. No, you, yeah, <laughs> you're, yeah, no, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just keep going. Don't worry about uh, it. But yeah, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge fan of your performance in uh, Batman Under the Red Hood. Oh, thank Probably you very much. One of the I, best I appreciate Joker that. Interpretations. Thank you. Um, would you ever consider going back to that part? You, yeah, of course. What are you, crazy? I mean, you know, just, no. <laughs> Mark Campbell's got... Got, in a, got this thing locked down. I think I got it. The joy about doing the Joker is, is that, and, and I've said it before, and I, th and I think uh, Mark Hamill has said it as well, is um, the, the Joker is like this iconic role that is almost like a modern-day Hamlet, you know, or, or just, you know, it, he's that big a character, um, and there are so many ways to play him. 
Um, so to get to play one of the great, you know, you know, roles like that is uh, is a real treat, and uh, I'm just happy to be in the in the in the crowd of uh, wonderful actors that have done them beforehand and also after. So. Yeah, but I'd, I'd, oh, I'd jump at the chance. I'd totally, yeah, absolutely, 100%. Thank you. You're welcome. You topped it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you topped it. No, you didn't. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Hello. What's happening? What's your name? Uh, my name is Dublin. Hey, Dublin, how's it going? What's your question? Uh, first, I want to say uh, thank you for the documentary, I Know That Voice. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Available on iTunes and Amazon. I I watch it all the time, and it helps me think, prove that someone who's on the spectrum and not the smartest tool in the shed can still be a good voice actor. Well, all, listen, I'll tell you one thing. Um, all, all it takes is to uh, surround yourself with the right people and be a right, good part of a team because everybody counts. Yes. Everybody counts. So it's, it's not just one person that's, that's doing all the work. It's a whole bunch of people. So... Good, good luck to you. What's it? So what's up? What's the second part? Uh, my question is, uh, was it true that were you in Avatar The Last Airbender as the actor Toph? Yes, I was. That is true. That was me. Could you but the unfortunate thing is, if I, I don't remember anything about that, because it was just like, you're going to be this guy playing this guy. I was like, what? Who's that? What? Oh, OK. <laughs> but yes, that was me. I don't, totally, yeah. I think he may have even had some sort of cheesy kind of actory sort of voice or something, I mean, maybe, I don't know. I don't know where that came from. Like, also, um, and my question is, what's your favorite line you said as Jake? My favorite line I said as Jake? Um, geez, there's a lot of good ones, but I think, uh, oh, I better get this right, because I'm him. Um, <laughs> that's tough, man. You paraphrase something, people are like, no. <laughs> no, that's not it. I'm sorry, you didn't get it right. Um, I think, let me see, let me, uh, yeah. Uh, sucking at something is the first thing. Wait, you guys know what it is. <laughs> sucking at something is the first part of, act, of being sort of good at something. There it is. That's it. That's it. I, that's my favorite, that's my favorite one because it just is, it's, so wise and it's so true that you know it it, it, it it's universal mm -hmm. you know you can't just step into something and be like i'm great no you're not <laughs> but you know if you work at it you can kind of get sort of good at it you know so that's yeah that's my favorite quote thank you for the good question i appreciate it great good luck question. to you good great luck question. to you man and bravo for stepping to the microphone man that's all right Evening. I'm Nick. Hi, Nick. How you doing? I'm doing fairly well. All um, right. I actually had the pleasure of meeting uh, Billy West a few years ago in Albuquerque Comic Con. B Billy West is, is uh, of course, Fry, Zoidberg, oh, yeah, the Professor, fantastic. Zap Brannigan, everybody, Red M&M. &M. Um, everybody. He's, he's a Red M&M. &M. You guys are laughing like I'm serious. He's, the, he's been the Red M&M &M for a long time. You know who the yellow M&M &M is? J.K. Sims. That, why you guys got to steal my thunder, man? <laughs> It is cold-blooded. Do you see that? I did. About 25 people were like, I know this! <laughs> <laughs> I know this! Um, so, so, I'm yeah, sorry. My, I interrupted uh, my you. My question for you is, uh, being a part of Futurama and, uh, and Adventure Time and having those things be such long-running shows and being such fantastic to have a great fan base, what was it like finishing up those series and having it come to a, like a definitive ending and doing those last few readings with all your coworkers and everybody. Like, how did that make you feel knowing that it was ending, but it was coming to such a good end for everybody? Oh, you know what? It's funny because after the series ended, there was a couple other things that we did. It was just like, when is this show gonna die? This is like, <laughs> I love this show and I don't want it to, but it's, it keeps coming back to life. Like right now, it's, it's zombie Futurama. It's just walking around like, uh, I'm not hearing a no. <laughs> you know, just like, it's ridiculous, but but now I mean like but Adventure Time just came back now. I'm like what? what it's insane. Like I'm, I'm you know it's funny because when the series of Futurama ended and it was like that last episode where you know Fry keeps you know uh, what he keeps hitting the ground or think yeah because he comes off the boat. <laughs> whatever that last episode I I I couldn't bring myself to watch it for a while. I'm going to see if this is Spectrum again. <laughs> oh, it's 
totally it. Yeah, you assholes. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Hello? This call is from the Department of Social Security. My ass it is! <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> I apologize for the language, but these <laughs> bastards deserve it. Wow, unbelievable. All right, how about I put this thing on Do Not Disturb? That's a good idea. No, wait, hold up. Shit. What? I was really hoping that they were looking for Sal. Uh, Sal yeah, oh, my God. <laughs> I talk to Sal. <laughs> Sal Emmy. Sal Emmy, hey! <laughs> there it is. Now it's not going to turn on anymore. So wait a minute. So you, so yeah. So it keeps coming back to life. So it's, it's a pain in the ass. But like I tell you, I couldn't bring myself to watch the uh, the last episode of Futurama for a while. And then when when Adventure Time ended, and we had to sing that song in the last episode, like I cried through that whole recording session. It was ridiculous. I cr like it's like it's on the internet now. Like I cried when they did it at Comic Con, and I looked like an asshole. It's just like I'm just sobbing, like just like. <laughs> um, but like I came home from that recording session just devastated, and I didn't. And it caught up to me. Like I didn't realize how much Jake the dog meant to me personally until it was. And. Now, it's like, I can't believe it's back again. It's just these weird things happening. You know you're in, you know you're in the right spot when these things keep coming back to life. It's just pretty, pretty amazing. But it's definitely emotional, I, you know, straight away. Like, it's definitely emotional. I still haven't watched the last episode of <laughs> Adventure Time. You couldn't pay me. I'm good. I know what happens. I don't need to see it. Add on the visual doom of that shit. I don't need that. No thanks, but I hope that answers your question, man. Yeah, thank you very All much. All right, cool, man. Great thank question. you. Yeah, that was a good question. And you know who keeps bringing this stuff back? Yeah. You all. Yeah, that's right. Hey, man. How's it going? What's your name? Uh, hi. My hi. name is Alex. Hi, Alex. What's your question? Uh, my question is, and this is a little technical one, but, uh -oh. uh, you know, everyone knows you for your voice work, and uh, rightfully so. You are a terrific voice actor. Thank you. But uh, some people here in this room might not know that you've also done some live action work as well. Yes, I have. Um, and I was just curious then, like, uh, did you have any particular favorite, like, live action roles that you've done in your career? Or? No. <laughs> They've all been unmemorable. <laughs> That's why I'm doing this stuff. Because when they see me on camera, they go, <laughs> I did, uh, no, I did, you know what, actually, uh, I, I'm lying. I, I would be remiss if I didn't say that doing uh, Little Fockers wasn't a whole lot of fun. Um, I got to work with De Niro for a day, which was really cool. Um, and he was, <laughs> he was funny, but the thing was, is we shot this scene, it was, it was me and uh, Jordan Peele as uh, EMTs. And uh, we had to carry... Robert De Niro strapped to a gurney over a field of grass. And I don't know if you know how hard it is to push a gurney over a field of grass without anybody on it. Put Robert De Niro on it. And then try and walk and talk with your lines and have them tell you before you do this that you need to make sure that Mr. De Niro doesn't fall out. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Um, all right. And it went fine and went great, but then there was a there was a thing that was there was a take and I screwed it up and I was like, fuck, I'm sorry. And we, you know, we're rolling everybody and I totally screwed it up. I was like, fuck, I'm sorry, I'll get it, I'll get it. And I did I did the next one and I I mean I nailed it. It was it was perfectly done. I mean it, it was it was right on the mark. Everything worked perfectly. And at the, and they yelled cut and I went, yeah! I was like, whoa! <laughs> and De Niro looked at me, and I swear to God, he went. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> and to have De Niro say that to you, it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> I could have died right then. It was awesome. But, yeah, it was, 
It was really fun. I mean, the, I mean, I mean, he does have face. It's insane. It's, it's so funny. I just wanted to, you know. And then he roll, he, he always watch De Niro in any movie, and he, if he's eating, he does this with a ketchup bottle every time. <laughs> 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 it's the funniest thing. He does it every time, and it's a lot of ketchup. Always just way too much ketchup. And you're like, huh, that's a lot of ketchup for an Italian guy. Jesus, you'd think that he would not, you know, he wouldn't fucking want a lot of ketchup. I don't like a lot of ketchup. I'm about to put more on there. It's weird. Anyway, so there, there's my, that's my favorite. Th that was my favorite gig. Thanks, uh, thanks. thanks for answering the question. All right, cool. Thank you. Great question. How's it Hi. going, man? My name's Andy. Hi, Andy. And uh, I was wondering, when you were working uh, on Futurama, voicing Bender, mm -hmm. how much of that character was like already developed as far as his attitude and personality, and how much of that did you put in yourself? Well, I think it was a combination. It was, a, it was, it was the stuff they were writing... And then when I would do it, I would just, you know, I, I have to say this. If you listen to Bender in the beginning and the end, his funkometer just goes from 1 to 11. <laughs> he just develops this sense of funky sass that, I, I, I mean, he just, you know, like, yeah, baby, I know it, you know, that kind of thing, you know. Um, but, but, like, uh, I mean... They would write stuff, and I would, you know, I I would do, uh, uh, I I would do things like I would riff on stuff, and you know, let's go already, you know, that kind of stuff. Like it would it would say like you know, it, it was just a combination of everybody in the room, just you know, the really solid direction by David X Cohen, like just being like, try this, try this, and and we would, you know, we would get everything done, and then we'd throw more stuff at the wall to see what stuck. And sometimes stuff stuck. Like, the thing that I made up, which is funny, is the Bender Stroll and the Bender Strut. The Bender Strut is, uh, is, uh, Scoot that doodle doodle doo doo doodle ass girly boo ba ba dee la doo 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 ba ba dee la doo 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 When he would walk and do that, you know, um, they asked me to just make up something, and that's what I came up with, and they were like, holy shit, we gotta keep that. And then there was the Bender Stroll, which was the whistle, and they were like, don't, and this was the hardest thing. They were like, don't make it musical, but don't make it sound like anything else. So it, it was, it's just like, it's just, you know, it's like crazy make em ups you know? Um, but the Stroll was whistling. And it was just, he would walk down the street and do that. Um, the best part about it was, was that I got um, into the composers. ASCAP is, a, is like a composers union that, you know, all these songwriters get. And I got into the union, and I get paid a separate check every time one of those songs air <laughs> because I wrote them. So it's kind of cool that... I get to do that, so that's, yeah, so that's, there's that, so that's, there's that that came about, but like it was, all I have to say about them is that the writing was so good, there wasn't a need to improvise, um, but when you got the opportunity to improvise, after you got everything on paper right, and write a couple different ways, then you could kind of play around and stuff like that, um, which, is the, which is the case usually when it's, when the writing is that good. But there you go. I hope that answers right. your question. Thank you very much. Absolutely. My pleasure. How's it going? Good. All right. What's your name? Trevor. Trevor, what's your question? Uh, so you've done a lot of voice acting over the year. Mm -hmm. Which character do you resonate the most with? Like, which oh, one do you oh. look at and you see yourself? Oh, God. Pick your favorite child afterward. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just... Um, I mean, you know, it's kind of like, well, Jake, Jake's voice 
is my voice, but with a hug around it. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like that. You know, you kind of feel like, you know, you're getting a little snuggly and stuff like that, you know. Um, but Bender is just such an asshole and so grumpy. And I'm 51 now, so I'm just getting more and more jaded by the day. <laughs> and so, yeah, I don't know, man. It, it all depends. Um, I can be the joker in traffic, you know. <laughs> Uh, I didn't want to murder a whole, everybody, um, but I mean, I, I mean, put a gun to my head, I'd have to say Bender, just because I like beer. <laughs> so, but don't quote me on that, because my wife will give me a lot of shit. <laughs> so, there you go. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Thanks for the question. Yes. Good job. Hi, what's your name? Hi, my name is Alexis. Hi, Alexis. What's your uh, question? Uh, it's kind of a two-for-one deal. Twofer? Um, yeah. Um, so, um, my favorite character on Futurama is hands down Bender. Um, and Shut up, baby. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as a person who st uh, struggles with depression, um, it really helps to watch Futurama on, day on tough days. And I, I guess I was um, wondering if Bender would have any words of wisdom. Oddly enough, because he oddly enough cheers me up. So. All right, any kids in here? Keep your eye, keep your ears closed. <laughs> Tell everybody to fuck off! <laughs> Yay! Yeah. You and you and you and you. Everybody gets a big F you. Yeah. <laughs> do 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 do. <laughs> Is that okay? Does that work for you right there? Yeah. Okay, I want that. That's the first part. What's the yeah. second part? Uh, the second part is I just wanted to ask if you would do his catchphrase. Bite my shiny metal ass, baby. Thank you. And don't forget to kill all humans. <laughs> Thank you. I dig it a daffodil. <laughs> what else is there? This, <laughs> well, he's got a couple of cheesy. <laughs> That was not as good unless you're really in, in the shit. So, but yeah. All right, cool. Thanks so much. Good luck. Good luck. Don't let the bastards get you down. That's it. And hello, young person. With the... Hi. Hi. W what's your name and what's your question, young man? I'm Theo, and I was wondering if you could sing um, Making Baking Pancakes. <laughs> Theo, Theo, you the you you just slipped that right in there, didn't you? <laughs> just like, um, can you just do the voice, please, and shut up <laughs> stories? I just want to hear the one song, and I'm out of here, bro. <laughs> I gotta. All right, uh, this is for you, bro. All right, Theo. Making pancakes, making bacon pancakes. I take some bacon and I put it in a pancake. Bacon pancake, that's what it's going to make. Bacon pancakes. All right. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome, Theo. I appreciate it. Awesome. He just was like, yeah. Ugh. No. Give us Everybody. A song, man. Give us a song. Everybody, thanks. Jump through Theo. the hoops now. <laughs> Enough of the story. Let's go. Give us what we want. <laughs> Little Theo taking care of business. Ooh. Somebody's got to go pee. Somebody's got to go pee. The dog really needs to pee. Or maybe it's a... Nope, there's a question. That dog's going to ask a question. I thought that dog needed to pee. Nope. R rude. Dog is going to be like... Hi, how you doing? What's your, what's your name and your question? Hey, John, I'm Eric. Hey, Eric. Oh, yeah, I remember you. I signed a picture for you. Yeah. Okay, there you go. So on Futurama, you guys would record together? Yes, as an ensemble, yes. Do you prefer that versus recording individually? Well, the beauty of it is, is that when you record as an ensemble, you kind of get the, you get the feel of what's going on in the room all the time. And when they're not there, you kind of know the kind of choice that they're going to make and, and what they, what, what's in their arsenal. So you can kind of just, you can kind of still play. 
You know, you, you, you have somewhere to go. Um, and sometimes, unfortunately, you're not able to record with everybody. You know, uh, uh, schedules change and stuff like that. And, I mean, it, it, I mean, uh, Katie was barely there. When, when Katie was there, it was just like, Katie, yay! But she was doing Sons of Anarchy, and she was doing um, eight, uh, eight um, she was doing that John Ritter show when he passed away, and thank you, you apes to eight simple rules to murder my daughters or something like that, or, or murder my daughter's boyfriends. Um, uh, but, but, but yeah, like, it, 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 was, uh, it was always in an ensemble, and that's when the magic happens. That's when it really is, is, a, is you hit sweet spots, and you get really funny stuff, and... Yeah, it's great. It's great. When we first started, when we were doing that, I was afraid I was going to get fired because it kept ruining takes because of people and the funny stuff that they were doing. So, yeah, but the ensemble is the best. That's really, that's really where it's at. Thanks. All right, you're welcome. Great question. Thank you. Hey, how's it going? All right. All right, cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What's your, what's, your, what's your name and what's your question? I'm Mandy, which just Hi, got Mandy. legally changed. All right, cool. Hey, all right. Nice. Um, Very cool. And on a similar subject, I wanted to start off by thanking you because both Jake's shape-shifting and Bender getting a sex change that one time helped me come to terms with my own gender. Well, that's awesome. Which sounds ridiculous. No, paper. it doesn't sound ridiculous. That's awesome. I've, that is so awesome. That is not ridiculous, Mandy. That is totally awesome. Okay, I might cry, but I was wondering if either of those characters had anything to say to help me come out to a few of my close friends. Hail, hail, Rabonia, a land I didn't make up. Hey, why don't you welcome Mandy into the world, damn it. Mandy is here forever. That's what I'm talking about. Congratulations. You keep being you. Don't let anybody give you any shit. Because I'll come around and kick him right in the nuts. Yeah. You do your thing. Congratulations. Absolutely, 100%. I got you back. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank a hundredfold. You. Awesome. Congratulations. It's, it's hard enough just living, man. It's hard enough just living. It's just trying to be yourself in this world, man. It's just... Don't, don't let... Don't let these fucking haters get you down. Don't ever, ever, ever let these people that tell you that you can't be you try and dictate to you what your life is going to be. Don't ever, ever do it. Don't ever do it. You be you. Keep being you. Keep being strong. You're, you're, you have so much more. You have, you have exhibited so much more strength than so many people in their lives. You just... Mandy, keep it together. Don't even worry about that shit. You just let that shit slide. You be you. Good luck to you. How you doing? What's your name and what's your question? Uh, hi there. Name's David. David, how you doing? Doing all right. All right. Uh, so my question is, so you are these characters, Jake, Bender, for so long, for so many seasons, that I'm sure a lot of the other cast and crew kind of looked at you as those characters, did you ever have like a director or a writer come up to you and be like, yeah, I'd, I'm not really sure what Jake would do in this situation. What do you think? Um, you know what? That's an interesting question, but unfortunately, not really. It was always, it was always set. It was always in the script. There was never a, there was never a time where I felt like I needed to be like, hey, you know what? I don't think this character would do that. You know, I, I didn't really, and I didn't really have that kind of power either, you know, and to, to be, you know, because you try to pull that weight, you, you just lost your gig, you know. Well, I don't think so. Well, we don't think so either. <laughs> so you can go home. Um, but no, I haven't, I never, I never really, but then again, I mean, I have said, hey, well, can we try it like this, you know, and maybe, maybe, you know, once again, you throw something at the wall and see what sticks. And, you know, I would at least get that. But never demanding, like, hey, you know, I think this or, or, ever, or anybody coming to me and saying, well, what do you think about this direction we're going in? Um, you know, I would just, my, my thing would just slightly variate off the direction just to give it a choice, you know, and give it a little more, a little more something, a little more depth, so. 
Thank I hope you. that answered your question. Yeah. All Great right. Question. Hey, Yankee fan. All right. Hey. <laughs> Hi, my name is Gloria, and I was just wondering, how did you feel working with Billy West again in the Adventure Time episode, Everything Jake? Oh, that was a lot of fun. And Billy didn't understand why he was there, which was really funny. <laughs> <clears throat> but, I mean, but basically that episode, Everything Jake, um, they purposely had Billy come in and play all the other characters as the Futurama voices which was a tribute to Futurama from Pendleton Ward, which was really cool. Um, they, uh, both he and Matt Groening have a mutual admiration society going on, and, and, which is also why, you know, uh, they sh you know J uh, Bender goes down into that dungeon in the one episode, and Jake and Finn are there, and Jake says, what time is it? And Bender says, it's time for you to shut up. <laughs> So there's a, you know, so, so, but, but, <laughs> but listen, working with Billy is the best. I just, he has stories for days um, and he's uh, just so wonderfully talented and his voice has always cracked me up. And, and I mean, Zoidberg is, is my, my favorite uh, uh, Futurama character. I mean, all the stuff that he does, like, you know, we would, we would all have, you know, Zoidberg and Professor offs, you know, just being like, oh my yes, oh my no, you know, just, <laughs> we all just, good news everyone, <laughs> bad news, you know. It, oh, I'm not hearing a no. <laughs> Fry, are you gonna eat that sandwich? I mean, just, uh, just so funny, but. But Billy's just one of my favorite people on the planet. I love Billy. I love working with him. It's really a thrill. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. And just so everyone knows, we got about five-ish minutes left for questions. Five-ish minutes. We're gonna we'll pop see how off. we can do this. So who's in the back of that line? We're gonna see. If, okay, you're the you're the end. No more. Nobody gets behind you. Damn it! <laughs> I don't know what. I'm not trying to. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm just playing. Um, you're on roller skates. Hi. What's your What's your name and question? Uh, my name's Rowan. Um, Hi, Rowan. Rowan's on roller skates. I am. I haven't felt today yet, and that's... Uh, now you just jinxed it. You're going to... Oh, yeah. I'm gonna you're going to go away. It. <laughs> but it's uh, an achievement. Uh, yes. Um, my... Uh, so, I'm sure other people feel the same way. Um, Adventure Time has really helped me. Um, yeah. Through everything yeah um, it has really emotionally impacted me and I wanted to know um, which character that you've done has emotionally impacted you the most I mean I, I, you know it's funny because I mean I'd have to say I mean Jake really I mean like I I, uh, I never knew how much he meant to me and and I kind of just was, I, I, I guess I kind of held it at bay for a long time. Um, and then when it was over, it just I called my wife after we did the last re recording and I burst into tears. And was just like, I didn't realize how much this meant to me. And she said, you know, I, I hear you. I can hear it in your voice. Um, but I, I got to tell you, people have told me, uh, people have told me a lot about how, it's gotten them through tough times and stuff like that. And, and, and I appreciate you being very honest in front of everybody. And, and, and uh, yeah, you know, I, I'm glad I was there for you in spirit. Um, and uh, I will hopefully continue to do that role with the, with the jobs I get and with uh, these new uh, episodes coming up. Uh, but I really appreciate that. And I hope you're all right. And I hope that you made it out of the... Oh, yeah. Out of the storm, good, because that's all they are. Mm -hmm. That's all they are. They're just storms, and they pass. You know, so yeah. keep at it. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Good. Uh, my name is Jesse. Hi, Jesse. How you doing? Um, after watching your panel, I think I know the answer to this question, but I just want to double check. Okay. Do you have conversations with yourself with all the voices? No. Like, no, but just all work. I'll tell you a story though. That, that I don't. I don't do that. But when I was single and living alone in Hollywood, uh, a young single uh, knucklehead, um, and I would play Gears of War. 
into the evening and uh, I would be yelling at the screen and my neighbors didn't really care because they were all they were all Armenian and so but they would just be like oh John is uh, screaming at himself again on the I mean, like, you know Dom Baird you two take left I'm like no don't go left and people like people are, what's going why is he talking how the hell is that wait a minute what the what so yeah I have I guess you can say I haven't talked to myself in the voices, but I've talked at myself, I guess. Okay, that's So cool. there, there, yeah, there's a qualifier there, so okay. Thank you. There, you're welcome, Thank absolutely. You. All right. Hi, I'm Janelle. Hi, Janelle, how you, how you doing? Good, it's good seeing you again. All right, yes, I met you before. What's, yep. what's your question? And so Futurama has been one of my favorite animated shows since I can remember. Thank you. And. So what I'm wondering is that one thing that I love about it is it has both really heartfelt episodes and some that are a little more on the silly side. Mm -hmm. Which episode do you feel was the most impactful to you? Jurassic Park. Mine as well. <laughs> it still makes me cry. 21 minutes of hilarity and then one minute of I'm going to rip your heart out, stomp on it on the ground, put it back in, and then punch you in the nuts. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> the, yeah, that's pretty much that one. Straight away, Jurassic Park. Easy. With uh, Luck of the Fryrish coming in a close second. Yes, exactly. How you doing, man? Pretty good, pretty all right, good. What's your, name, what's your question? Name's Ryan. Ryan, uh, all right. Ryan. <laughs> yes, Ryan, yes. Okay. Okay, we got that straight. I know this game. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> uh, my question for you is, uh, what do you miss most about playing Dr. Draken from Kim Possible? Mm, Dr. Draken, yes. Leather and send obey. <laughs> there's a there's a Kim Possible in here. There she is. Hi, how you doing? There she is. I saw her. There's always one in the bunch. Somebody's dressed as Kim Possible. Nobody dresses as she go. <laughs> <laughs> but I missed it. It, it was a, it was a fun show to do. But I did uh, Penguins of Madagascar with the same guys, and was Rico on that show. And even them in the throwing up bombs and stuff like that, which was fun. Those guys are great. They're doing Big Hero 6 now. Yeah, so, that's true. Yeah. There you go. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. All right, and now we're in the lightning now round. We're, yeah, lightning round. With the dog, I love it. I'm Ashley, this is Nyx. Hot Nyx? Nyx, N-Y-X. N-Y-X. Hi, Nyx. Greek goddess. Hi, Nyx. You can meet her later. Okay. Uh, so, Brian Drummond had said that anything under nine words you don't get paid for as a voice actor. Obviously, you have a lot of iconic roles now, but when you were starting out, did you have any smaller roles? Who said had? this? Brian Drummond? He's got a shitty agent. <laughs> I'm sure this was End many of story. years ago. Nope. End of story. That guy's got a shitty agent. I have said one word in an episode and got paid thousands of dollars. <laughs> no, nope. you got a shitty agent. Sorry, Brian Drummond. I don't know who that is, nor do I care to, because he's a sucker. That's for real. He crazy. He ain't getting paid because he's stupid. That's all I have to say about him. Right, so the question was... Uh-huh. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> if you had had any smaller roles that you had tried to expand to a larger role, and if you had succeeded. Wait a minute, I'm, 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 not, I'm not getting it. So if you had a smaller role that right. expanded into a bigger role, you, kind of surprisingly. Kind of like, uh, you know, having a guest star on a show and then becoming a season regular yeah. on the second one. Sure. I mean, that's happened in voiceover, but, like, that's only because, you know, you're fooling around with a voice in between takes, and they go, we got to use that, that's funny. Like, for, for uh, Kim Possible, Motor Ed was just something I was screwing around with. It's like, totally, yeah, this dude right here, yeah, seriously, you know. And he came up and he was like, yeah, yeah, Motorhead. And it, 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 but that was because I was just doing it. And then he became a regular villain, you know, which is, I guess, I guess that's kind of the yeah. only equivalent I can have. Yeah, so, thank you. All right. All right, quick. Here we go. Hi, uh, was there ever a role you uh, auditioned for but didn't make and kind of look back and wish you had? Batman. Mm. Which one? But I got Aquaman instead, so it's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that's the that's the role. That's the yeah. We're lightning round. Yeah, that's it. Thank nice you for the question. question. Thank you. Yes. Hi. You were hey. dressed as a Tribble earlier, weren't you? Yes. Yeah, hardcore Trekkie, right there. That's pretty awesome. 
she's had little furry balls <laughs> to give away, not like, you know, forget it. That's the, that's the end of the day. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. What's your question, young lady? Well, it's a simple question, but are you a cat person, a dog person, or a reptile person? Simple, you said. That's not simple. <laughs> I, have a, I have a dog and two cats. You used to have two dogs, but one of them passed away. Aww. I used to have two cats, and then one of them passed away, and then we got another cat. <laughs> so now I just have one dog, two cats. You can check them out on Instagram. <laughs> For real. You yeah. can check them out on Instagram. But I was never a cat person, and I love my cats. I love my cats. I might not love your cats, but I love my cats. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Just like I might love my dog, but I'm mostly, mostly a dog person, but I like cats now too. But lizards, or like reptiles, their poop is funny. I don't know, man. It's just, I can pick up some cat shits and dog shit, no problem. Lizard poop, I'm like. That's a lot. It's not even lizard shit, it's like lizard poop. It's gross. So I'm sorry, I'm not a, I'm not a reptile person. <laughs>